Hi, this is me after the fact, letting you know that I decided to do the shop news segment into its own little video. So whenever I cut to what I originally recorded, I'm going to just be hopping into it as if I was just finished doing the regular part of the 90% knitting episode. So if the transition seems a little abrupt, that's why um, it was just, I decided to split it into two videos um, on account of time length of video so this will be shorter and more manageable but you will be able to see the regular episode 303 video of 90 percent knitting in its own video just letting you know that thanks okay shop news so the shop update will be on wednesday january 23rd at 6 p.m eastern um i've got a bunch of different things that i'm going to be putting into the shop so let me just start with um, one and we'll see what there's gonna be. I'm gonna start with the Valentine's colorways because there's only a few of them. Um, I can. This is the only update that I can promise you that there will be Valentine's colorways in this year. Um, if I get a chance to do more, great, but otherwise this may be it for this year. And they are mostly, they're actually, all three of them are self-striping colorways. Two of them are brand new. The one that I'm bringing back from a past year is this one, which is the Sweetness Speckles. Um, this is the sample that I knit last year, so I just thought I'd bring it in because I don't have any of the yarn here to show you yet. It's still downstairs. Anyway, this is a two-stripe colorway with the undyed stripe and then the fun Valentine's-y colored speckles in it. So there will be some skeins of this. I can't remember how many I've got. Not a lot, quite honestly, but there will be some. All in fingering weight. All right, next up I have the two new colorways. Again, they are both self-striping. This is a five stripe um, colorway and this is called the Be Mine Stripes. Last year I did the Be Mine Mini Sets, which was four semi-solid colors and then a speckled stripe. Um, this is not the same colors as those, just in case you were wondering. This was sort of, um, that was sort of my inspiration for doing this colorway, but some of the colors do differ. So, I mean, they might coordinate if you happen to have a set of those sitting around. I'm not doing that mini set again this year. I'm just doing the self-striping. So <laughs> we basically have five different Valentine's-y stripey colors here in pinks and purples and magentas and red. So fun colors. Um, I have this right now. I have it on Traveler. I also have it on a Mountain Tweed. Um, I love how things die up on Mountain Tweed. It's just that little bit of mutedness in it. Um, I will have it on at least one other fingering weight base. Probably, I'll probably have it on Bounce and Bedazzled and possibly some heavier weight bases as well. So there are those. And then the other new Valentine's Day color is called I Think You're Marvelous. <laughs> and this is my ode to mauve or mauve or however you want to pronounce it. Um, it's funny because Mauve for me is a color that I can't quite nail down. Sometimes it looks more pink, sometimes it looks more purple. So I put together this four stripe colorway with one main stripe. And this is more of a light pinkish mauve. It's, it's more pink than purple. Um, and then the other three stripes are all speckled stripes. And each one has a speckle of a different shade of mauve in it. Um, and then the pink stripe to the main semi-solid stripe, you'll also end up getting some of these little, just very random red speckles in it as well. So it's sort of a little bit of everything. I, it's a very, um, it's a very subtle colorway. I'm actually going to knit up a, a little sample of this to have in the listing so you'll see what it looks like. Um, but right now I have it on Heavenly and I have it on Bedazzled. And again, I will have it on a couple of other bases as well. So that's it for Valentine's Day colorways. Hopefully something there makes you happy if you like knitting for Valentine's Day. I know some people really like to, other people don't care, but I always like to have at least a few colorways available for the holiday. Um, I brought this in, I don't know why, because it's not new. It's already in the shop. This is, I just wanted to let you know there are still quite a few of the Dyer's Favorites 2018 sets in the shop. There are a couple of the original batch, and then there are still a bunch of the um, 
the alternative stripe pattern. It's all the same colors, the stripes just go in a different order than the original version, so there's really not a ton of difference. And they all still come with the little mini, um, the 20 gram mini with the speckles of all the colors as well. So there's lots of those. Um, the alternative stripe um, group, or the alternative stripe sets are discounted a couple of dollars just because they are different from the original, um, but still the same great colors. Okay. Everything else, that's all the self-striping that'll be this year or this week. Next, I want to show you my Ridgetop line. I'm so excited about this. You've heard me talk about this for quite a while now. I feel like I've been teasing you a lot, um, but I'm finally ready to put it up in the shop. Um, what I have come to realize about this line is, number one, um, if you haven't heard me talk about it, let me introduce it properly. My ridge li Ridgetop line of yarn is a non-superwash yarn that I'm having custom milled for me. Um, it is an 80-20 blend of Romney and Falkland, um, which makes it a nice um, toothy yarn, not scratchy, but it's definitely grippy, toothy, because one of my original goals for this yarn is I wanted to have a really good yarn for color work. Um, and that is definitely it. If you watch the first part of the podcast, I showed you the mitt that I started in the fingering weight version. It's excellent for color work. It's got that stick that you want when you're doing color work. Um, and then the other purpose that I had for this is just to have a base available to you guys that doesn't have super wash. I mean, not everybody wants to have super washed yarns for all their projects, even socks. Um, Sarah from the Yarns at Yinhu podcast is currently knitting a pair of socks that she's designing out of one of the skeins of my fingering weight um, to use that as a sock weight. Um, I did a pair of mitts out of the DK weight, which I will put a picture in here because I didn't think to bring them in with me. Anyway, they, it knits up so well. The DK and the fingering weight both are just so delightful. My hedge witch shawl I'm working on, that's out of the DK weight. Um, I, my camera just shut off in the middle of me talking. I have no idea where it left off. <laughs> so I'm gonna just pick up. Um, I'm talking about the ridge top line. Um, I, what I was starting to say was that right now I'm focusing on doing these in tonal shades. Um, semi-solid and tonal shades and the tonality of this yarn basically comes from the yarn itself um, the Romney and the Falkland together have both different characteristics and they dye up differently um, I'm just gonna start showing you the colors I will say that right now I am NOT putting any of these up as colors that I can promise I will always have um, on this base or that are going to be um, repeatable. I'm, this is still new enough to me that I'm trying to dye up enough batches of it to know that I can get repeatable colorways on this base. Um, it's completely a different ball game than dyeing superwash yarns. Superwash yarns are so easy to do predictably. Non-superwash is not. <laughs> that was my experience from past yarns that I've had as well. Um, anyway, so here are a couple, let's see. Let's start with these. These are the fingering weight. Again, this is 80 and 20, 80% Romney, 20% Falkland. Um, the Falkland is a more of a merino base. Falkland refers to where the yarn comes from or where the fiber comes from, not a breed. Falkland is not a breed. It is sheep from the Falkland Islands. Um, it's a lot of times merino, but there are there can be other breeds involved in it too. But it's very soft so it that's why i had the falkland added to this blend because i wanted to balance that um toothiness of the romney with something that gave it a little bit of softness um so that's what you've got there anyway this is a color i have not been able to repeat this is my peacock blue colorway it's looking kind of green on there i don't know maybe it's because of my sweater um but yeah, this is, I've tried to dye it again. I haven't gotten quite this color. I think I know why. So maybe whenever I get to do my next batch, I will be able to get this to repeat because Peacock tends to be pretty repeatable. This is my warm honey color. I will say out of all the colors I've been doing, this has been the one that I have had the best luck at repeating um, the color and having it look 
quite the same. This is denim. I've only ever done this one once on this base, but I really like this color and I've found that denim is fairly consistent in the way it dyes in general. So I'm hopeful that this one I will be able to do um, more than once and have consistent colors. Okay, this is the colorway actually that Sarah is using right now and I'm calling this one Wild Bergamot. It's looking a little more pink on screen than it is. It's actually a little bit more purple. Um, this one died up pretty consistently from my first batch too, so I'm very happy about that. This one, I'm not sure if I'm going to consider this one to be repeatable or not. This is actually the color that I have the sample that's out right now um, dyed up in. This is a little different than that batch, but not significantly. So I don't know. I'm going to hold off naming this one quite yet. Um, same with this. I've done some of these I've done more than once. I'll hear this one actually. Oh, you know what? I think I misspoke earlier. I did. Forget what I said about denim. These are both peacock. <laughs> and you can see they're very different. And I, again, this is turning, the light in here is making these blow out a bit. Um, they're very not different. They're very not the same. They're quite different. This is much bluer. This is much greener. That's what I was going to say. Denim. This one's denim. <laughs> this is the one that I really think is going to be much more easy to be consistent with. Um, but yeah, I love how that one turned out. Sorry. Didn't mean to confuse things, but I love all three of these. The blues are really pretty. Um, Wisp also is one that I have very little problem getting to repeat. I've done this one a couple of times, so Wisp will be pretty much a consistent color. This green I'm not naming yet. It just, I haven't been able to get it to repeat super well, but you can see, I mean, can you see the areas where the fiber just takes the dye differently and it just gives it this really pretty tonality. Um, I like that a lot about how this yarn takes the color. This is the color that I did for the mitts that I, that I knit up. Um, the second batch did not turn out quite the same as the first, but it's still it's close so I'm still gonna work on that one this one I've done a couple times I cannot get it to repeat but it's very pretty on its own I've got actually a big batch of this <laughs> color so they'll be in there but you can just see I mean some of the fiber takes the, the dye much more um, brightly and then some of it's much hazier um, it's just the nature of this fiber so it's fun because you don't get the same thing all the time and even within the skein there's there's variation which gives it depth when you use it it's just as a dyer for me it's a little frustrating because I can't get it to do exactly what I want it to do this skein is actually sort of funny in some light this looks brown in here it looks very brown to me in other light it looks green and that's a frustration for me but it's very pretty it is meant to be a brown so and I do if I brought it in I don't think I did I do actually have a brown it's the same brown I'm using in my um, my hedge witch shawl so anyway um, yeah I just I brought in a representation of what I did I actually have a whole bunch of other colors again some of them were just small like three or four skein batches that I did just trying to to learn about this yarn we need the yarn and I need to get to know each other um, and I'm enjoying the process of getting to know this and I hope you will enjoy this at the at this current time um, as being something that I can offer you on a different base with different characteristics than anything else I carry um, with the understanding that I may not be able to totally repeat every one of these colors but if you see some colors that you would like to work with um, go ahead and grab them now and you'll have a special and unique you know item like see I put these together and that's the thing I can sit here and play with these and be like oh my gosh I would love to do something with all of these picking the colors for those mitts were so difficult because I could have just done any number of things like they're just so cool most of these colors I do have a little bit on each of the weights so I have some on the fingering some on the DK um, so hopefully you'll be able to find what you want. I am really looking forward to seeing some of you knit with this. I can't wait to hear what you think of it. Um, 
I've had pretty much all positive feedback from people who have been um, either sample knitting or um, kind of test knitting the yarn for me. I've, I've sent it to some people who have been doing some of their own projects with it just to try it out. I've had a lot of positive feedback and that makes me feel really good. I don't have any more on hand right now. Um, I do have a second run of this going at the mill now. Um, it will not be here for a couple more weeks yet. Um, so I would say hopefully by mid-February I should have a huge shipment of this coming into me that I can start dyeing again. Um, so if you have um, you know, ideas of something that you'd like to make and you want to do a special order of colorway, once I have my big amount here I will be able to do that. Um, I will say with regard to the individual weights of the yarn, the DK weight I find it, it knits up almost like a light worsted. It's a light worsted heavy DK, about 220 yards per 100 gram skein. So that that is like my cozy worsted weight is 220 grams, but it's a light thing. It's a, that's a light worsted, I consider it. Same way like Cascade 220, I consider that a light worsted. So it's right in that family. The fingering weight is about 400 yards per 100 gram skein. I will say most of these skeins are lighter than 100 grams. I, I talked to the mill about that and they said um, there are certain reasons that could have been contributing to that. So these will all actually be priced according to their weight, not according to what their weight should be, just so you know. And I will explain that in the listings. So you're not going to be getting the full yardage if these were 400 gram skeins, but they're still pretty generous. The next batch, I am having the fingering done up in full skeins and half skeins because I know if you're doing color work, you don't often need a full skein of your contrasting colors. So I wanted to make half skeins available to you as well. But for right now, I have everything in these full skeins. Um, I think that's all I want to say about this right now. I feel like I could keep talking about it, but I feel like I'd also be repeating myself a lot. All right, I have one other thing I want to show you that's going into the shop, and this is a true one-of-a-kind kind of thing. Um, last year, like, oh, early in the year, I had decided that I wanted to bring in another lace weight base. Uh, ultimately, I did end up bringing in another lace weight when I started carrying my fluff base, which was the Kid Merino and Silk base that I have in the shop. Um, but I tried out some other lace weight bases first. And this one is a 100% superwash merino um, lace weight that I tried and I brought it in specifically because I had a specific dye technique I wanted to try with it. Um, and even though I love the colors that I ended up with, at the time I wasn't sure that this was the base I wanted to carry. And ultimately I didn't end up carrying it. I ended up going with the mohair base as well. I don't know, I might carry it sometime in the future, but right now I don't I'm not I don't have plans to. But in the meantime, I have all these colors that I dyed up like last year, last spring actually, and I haven't been sure what to do with them. Um, I'm just gonna put them in the shop and they're gonna be up as one of a kinds essentially. They turned out beautiful. I absolutely love them. Um, I don't remember, now I do remember that I had issues um, winding the skeins to the length that I wanted because I bought this as cone yarn because um, I wanted to do some custom sizes and it was just so fine that I ended up having a lot of issues. So again, I will be selling this according to weight, not according to like any full kind of skein. Um, but it is a lace weight and it is 100% superwash merino and it's lovely. I mean, it just, that's really darker than it actually is in real life. Let's see, where can I put this that you might be able to see it? It's looking redder than it is. It's, it's definitely a reddish orange, but not quite that deep. I'm not giving any of these names, obviously, because I will never be dyeing these again. In fact, these are not even repeatable with other yarn. Um, so there's that orange batch. There's this really pretty blue. And these are all variegated. Tonals are variegated. Oh my gosh, this turned out so pretty. I love this. <gasps> Look at these together. Wouldn't they be stunning? Oh my goodness. This, and then I ended up with this one 
which was absolutely crazy. It's so deep and so saturated. These would look cool together too, I think, although there might not be as much contrast as you would think. This is really this dark. It's so, so dark. Um, let's see what else. This one is really pinky reds and purples. Is that it? Oh, green. Did I show you the green already? I don't remember. Oh, wait, that's not even that. That's <laughs> something else that shouldn't even be in that bin. Yeah. So anyway, um, it's just, it's lace weight that didn't end up making the cut as a, a regular shop item, but I've got these skeins and I want to offer them to you in case anybody has something that you might be able to do with them. And again, there are a lot of different yardages, so I will put that information in each listing so that you'll be able to tell what you're getting. And they'll be priced accordingly. They're beautiful colors. I just, it's not the time for that in the shop, I guess is the bottom line. So I believe that's everything I've got for the shop update this coming week. Again, it will be on Wednesday, um, the 23rd of January at 6 p.m. Eastern. And I think I'm going to stop now. I've tried recording this shop news segment like 10 times, and that's why I'm probably sounding frustrated and not enthusiastic, which is bad because like I should be really enthusiastic. Yarn, yay! I am enthusiastic about the yarn. I'm just frustrated with um, the process of recording this right now. <laughs> so I'm going to go. I hope you have a good rest of your weekend. I hope you stay warm. We're supposed to get slammed with a major, basically it's going to be an ice storm here, not even snow. So good time to knit, right? Oh, anyway. All right. That's it. Have a lovely weekend and I will talk to you soon. Bye.